pancreatitis, a condition that can turn from mild abdominal discomfort to life-threatening organ failure in a matter of hours. Do you know how to recognize, diagnose, and manage it? In this video, I'll give you a full clinical walkthrough of acute and chronic pancreatitis. Let's check it out. So before we actually dive into pancreatitis, let's understand what the pancreas is. It is a retroperitoneal organ behind the stomach with two main functions, the exocrine and the endocrine function. Exocrine produces digestive enzymes, which includes amylase, lipase, and proteases. Endocrine produces hormones, insulin and glucagon. There are other more. But what is pancreatitis? Well, when the pancreas has an inflammatory uh, reaction, there are two types that occur. You could either have acute pancreatitis or chronic pancreatitis. Acute one is usually sudden and reversible, and chronic is progressive with irreversible damage. But what causes pancreatitis? Well, I got a mnemonic. It's called Get Smashed. Gallstones, ethanol, trauma, steroids, mumps, autoimmune diseases, scorpion stings, hyperlipidemia or hypercalcemia, ERCP, and drugs such as azathioprine and diuretics. So now that we have an idea on what the pancreas is, what causes pancreatitis and the two different types, let's look at how they present. They usually present with epigastric abdominal pain, often radiating to the back, associated with nausea and vomiting, and in severe signs and cases, they could have shock or hypoxia. Physical exam findings include epigastric tenderness, guarding. The two things that may represent hemorrhagic pancreatitis are the Cullen sign, which is a periumbocal bruising, or the Gray Turner sign, which is frank bruising. So for diagnosis, using the Atlanta criteria, you need two out of the three. One is the typical abdominal pain, a serum lipase or amylase above the th three times the upper limit, or image findings noted on CT, MRI, or ultrasound. Important labs include lipase, which is more specific than amylase, liver function test to help you evaluate if there's any concern of gallstone pancreatitis, and calcium and triglycerides, as I mentioned, because those could be causes of pancreatitis in itself. For imaging, ultrasound looks for gallstones. Sometimes it's just biliary sludge, and those are still risk factors because there are small gallstones that can actually dislodge and block the common bile duct, which then may force uh, reflux of the digestive enzymes of the pancreas and cause the pancreatitis in itself. Other things include, for evaluation, the CAT scan of the abdomen to assess necrosis or complications. This is more for severity. Severity assessment can be performed with scoring systems such as Branson's criteria or BICEP score, but more importantly, clinical judgment and evaluating for either serious or organ failure is very important to determine who goes into the unit for extensive resuscitation. How do we manage this? Well, we got to make sure that the patient is NPO, hydrated with aggressive IV fluids, lactated ringers is preferred, and you got to monitor their response with urine output to know that they are perfusing. You have to have pain control and then treat the underlying cause. If there is a stone that is blocked on the common bile duct, that may require additional procedures such as an ERCP. A cholecystectomy is performed once the patient is stable to prevent future attacks if it is a gallstone pancreatitis. Again, important thing is to triage the patient with severe disease into the ICU so you can monitor them for organ and organ perfusion and address their fluid status as early as possible so that you may prevent its progression. What are the complications of pancreatitis? Well, as we talked about, we talked about or end organ failure, but 
innately for the pancreas, there are going to be several. One is a pseudocyst, wherein the inflammation over the pancreas creates a fluid collection around it. And most of the time, this self-resolves, and we monitor this one for at least six weeks. If it does cause symptoms, that's the time we actually do intervene. Number two, necrotizing pancreatitis. You have to differentiate between sterile necrosis or infected necrosis. Infected necrosis make you suspicious if there is gas or there is progression of the disease with concerns of signs of sepsis. And in this aspect, then those types of problems may need to be addressed by debridement of the pancreas, either surgically or endoscopically. The third and final, systemic complications such as ARDS, renal failure, or shock. For chronic pancreatitis, most of the common causes include chronic alcohol use, genetic, in which you could have CFTR mutation or hereditary pancreatitis, autoimmune pancreatitis, recurrent acute pancreatitis. Their clinical presentation is more of chronic epigastric pain, followed by a burned out pancreas, followed by fat malabsorption or steatorrhea, and with the pancreas not functioning properly, then you have exocrine and endocrine malfunctions or insufficiencies. So you develop diabetes mellitus. This may also be associated with weight loss. Your diagnosis, you can perform a CAT scan or an MRCP or ERCP to evaluate for ductal abnormalities. In CAT scan, you'll mostly see calcifications or atrophy of the pancreas. For exocrine insufficiency, you could perform fecal elastase and check for glucose intolerance. The management for chronic pancreatitis include pain management, pancreatic enzyme replacement, fat-soluble vitamin supplementation, diabetes management, alcohol cessation, and endoscopic or surgical intervention for complications. Don't forget, lipase three times normal equals diagnostic, but normal lipase doesn't exclude chronic pancreatitis. Number two, look for gallstones with ultrasound because you may have to take out that gallbladder to prevent subsequent pancreatitis. Number three, infected necrosis. They need antibiotic and possible drainage. Number four, chronic pancreatitis can progress to pancreatic cancer. So now that we actually differentiated the types of pancreatitis, the causes, and how to manage it. I'm hoping you guys can use it when you see your next patient. If you guys like the video, please click the like and subscribe button. And if you guys have any comments or suggestions, type it down.